Frank W. A. Bagnale, Catch Me If You Can, The True Story of a Real Fake. Delve into the thrilling world of Frank Abagnale Jr., a teenage runaway who metamorphosed into a masterful imposter, chronicled in Catch Me If You Can, the true story of a real fake. Abagnale forged checks and impersonated various professions, including an airline pilot, a doctor, and a lawyer, all to fund an extravagant lifestyle and attract women. Discover how Abagnale exploited his surroundings and relied on his intelligence and charisma to pull off schemes that would be nearly impossible today, and how, surprisingly, his criminal career ultimately led him to a prestigious role in helping others detect and prevent fraud. The Spark Behind Frank's Schemes Born to an affluent family, Frank Abagnale Jr. enjoyed a happy childhood until financial hardships and a credit card-enabled scam jumpstarted his life of crime and scheming. At just 16, faced with the collapse of his family's wealth, Frank embarked on a journey away from home. In Bronxville, a lovely New York suburb, Frank W. Abagnale Jr. spent a joyful early childhood in an upstanding family. Growing up in financial security thanks to his father's successful stationery store, life was the picture of perfection. But little did he know that this comfort would begin to disintegrate as he hit adolescence. Frank's father gifted the young 15-year-old a small symbol of the American dream, an old Ford. With this chariot, he caught the eyes of girls and ignited a lifelong passion for chasing beautiful women. However, Frank's part-time job as a warehouse clerk couldn't fuel his new hobbies, both literally and figuratively. He turned to his father for help, requesting a credit card to cover car-related expenses. Trusting his son, Frank's father lent him his personal mobile card and advised him to bear most of the debt himself. In poor judgment, Frank soon discovered other possibilities the card presented. This newfound potential led him to defraud $3,400 in three months, by charging services to the card and convincing gas station attendants to give him cash instead of the actual service. Unfortunately, Frank's deceit didn't last long, and when the scam surfaced, he faced the harsh consequence of being sent away to reform school. Returning home to a drastically different reality, Frank found his once thriving family in shambles. His father, a former business owner, now labored as a postal clerk. Witnessing the shocking demise of his family's fortune took a toll on young Frank. It was then that he took the bold decision to leave home at 16 and begin a life of self-reliance. The Teen Swindler's Escapade At only 16 years old, Frank decides he wants a life filled with luxury and adventure. Leaving home with just $200, he heads to New York City, where his job opportunities are limited by his status as a high school dropout. Undeterred, Frank discovers the lucrative world of cashing counterfeit checks. Wanting to attract more attention, he plots to become an airline pilot, or at least pretend to be one. Frank's height and charm convince others that he is older than he actually is, giving him an edge in his impersonations. Thanks to careful planning, research, and imitation of the mannerisms of real pilots, Frank successfully steps into his new swindling role alongside his fake career. Mastering Escapades in Frank's Era In the 1960s, Frank Abagnale took advantage of the era's lax security measures at airports and the abundance of unsecured information, which allowed him to effortlessly impersonate a Pan Am pilot. Deadheading, an industry practice for pilots, enabled Frank to travel extensively across the world. His incredible eye for detail and meticulous record-keeping of industry jargon and personal contacts further cemented his deceptive credibility, allowing him to expertly assume the identity of a professional pilot and keep his con alive. In Frank Abagnale's time, airports were much less secure than they are today, especially prior to the emergence of terrorist threats. This environment served as the perfect playground for his con, where he would pose as a Pan Am pilot and freely deadhead around the world. Deadheading practices permitted pilots to freely enter flights, declaring they needed to reach certain destinations for work. Frank benefited immensely from these arrangements, hopping onto hundreds of flights and exploring the world at no cost. 
His pilot persona also gained him access to hotel accommodations reserved for airline staff, where he would simply charge the bills to his supposed employer, Pan AM. Central to Frank's success were his sharp attention to detail and ability to quickly learn from his observations. He maintained a notebook filled with industry jargon, technical information, contact details, and other essentials to appear credible as a pilot. This detailed knowledge, such as the fuel consumption of airliners and standard protocols for altitude levels, enabled him to convincingly play his part. He was even able to engage in casual conversations with other pilots by referring to the information he had collected about them. These interactions served to verify his identity as a real pilot, allowing him to evade capture and continue his brilliant game of deception. Master of Disguise, A Conman's Journey Frank was a proficient conman with a talent for impersonation. His ventures ranged from posing as a hospital doctor to a university professor. Posing as a doctor was the result of writing, medical doctor, on a housing application in an upscale area. A neighbor, also a doctor, took an interest in Frank, leading to his temporary job as a shift supervisor at a local hospital. Subsequently, Frank perfected the act of being a doctor and his interns loved him. Moving on to his next venture, Frank posed as a pilot while faking a Harvard degree to take the Louisiana bar exam. Successful in passing, he landed a job in the Louisiana State Attorney General's office. His luck ran out when a colleague from Harvard continuously questioned his experiences at the university. He abandoned this act and moved to Utah, where he became a summer teacher at a local university, claiming to have been a sociology professor in New York. With more fake transcripts and letters, he began his short career as a beloved teacher. Frank's chameleon-like adaptability allowed him to change personas effortlessly. As a doctor, he was adored by his interns as they relished in the hands-on experience he provided. In his next roles, Frank even managed to become a lawyer by passing the bar exam and subsequently joined the state attorney general's office. As a temporary university professor, Frank was popular among students who enjoyed his engaging lectures. The various professions marveled at his talents, not realizing that his journey traced a path of ingenious deception. Frank's remarkable success as a conman highlights his ability to cultivate trust and charm those around him, all while disguising his shifting identities. Swindler turned crime specialist. Frank Abagnale, a notorious con artist, accumulated millions through his scams before his arrest at the age of 20. After a harsh stint in a French prison, he served time in Sweden and the United States. Upon release, Frank struggled to find legitimate employment due to his criminal record. Instead of reverting to his old habits, he offered his expertise in detecting fraud to banks, leading to a career as a white-collar crime specialist. Now, he teaches at the FBI, training agents to catch individuals like his former self. Life was once an extraordinary adventure for Frank Abagnale, who conned his way to millions and lived a luxurious life. However, at 20, his luck ran out when he was captured by the French police in Montpellier. Unbeknownst to him, law enforcement agencies worldwide had been tracking him for years. Serving a one-year sentence in the grim prison of Perpignan, Frank faced challenging living conditions, a tiny, dark cell with just a bucket for a toilet. He struggled with malnutrition and deteriorating health. Following this, Frank was extradited to Sweden to tackle separate charges, where he received better treatment. Eventually, he returned to the United States to serve additional time. After completing his sentence, Frank's criminal record hindered his job prospects. Rather than returning to his illegal schemes, he took a different path. He approached a bank and offered his services to teach employees how to identify fraudulent checks, leveraging the skills he acquired as a teenager. His expertise and unique insights soon attracted the attention of banks, airlines, and other high-risk businesses. Frank built a reputation as a white-collar crime expert, sharing valuable lessons from his dishonest past. In a remarkable turn of events, he now teaches at the Federal Bureau of Investigation, training future agents to catch con artists like the one he used to be.
Frank Abagnale Jr.'s audacious story, recounted in Catch Me If You Can, the true story of a real fake, is a testament to human adaptability and the power of persuasion. Despite his morally dubious life choices, Abagnale's adaptability allowed him to build successful careers based on fakery and deceit. However, in a surprising twist of fate, his criminal record and unique skills found their eventual use in helping authorities and corporations combat white-collar crime. By turning his life around, Frank Abagnale Jr. serves as an unusual example of how even the most deceptive of individuals can forge a new future and make a positive impact in the world.